Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a rational equation with complex numbers. We have a lot of z's, don't we? We have z cubed plus z in the numerator and z squared plus iz in the denominator and that ratio is equal to 1 which means they are equal, right, basically. But I just didn't want to write it as an equality like that. This looks more fun to me. Anyways, we're going to be solving for z. That's our goal. So how do we solve for z? I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm just going to cross multiply. Because why not, right? So if you do that, you're going to get zq plus z equals z squared plus iz. Because I'm multiplying by 1. And then if you put everything on the same side, this will become like a cubic equation, right? But a nice cubic. And we can basically put these two together like coefficient of z is just going to be 1 minus i. And of course, this is a nice cubic because it's factorable easily, right? We can take out z. Let's go ahead and factor out a z here. That's going to give us z squared minus z plus 1 minus i. You know what that means? That means that one of the solutions is z equals 0. Or is that the case? Let's find out. So if z is equal to 0, this equation is going to be true. And the other equation should be coming from the quadratic. Let's go ahead and solve it with the quadratic formula because we have a formula. We don't have a quintic formula, so we can't really solve quintics with the formula. But special quintics can be solved, you know, um, there are, there's a group of solvable quintics. Anyways, that's pretty <laughs> complicated. So maybe we can talk about it later. But the quadratic is easy to solve, very easy to solve actually, compared to even cubic. Uh, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, uh, minus 4ac. Okay, 4 times 1 minus i. a is 1, so I don't have to worry about it. And all of that is divided by 2. Awesome, let's go ahead and simplify this. <laughs> this kind of looks a little confusing, like square root of something with i. Don't worry, it's going to simplify really nicely because this is a special problem, remember? So, here's what we're going to do. 1 minus 4 is negative 3, and then negative 4 times negative i is positive 4i. Beautiful. Now, do you see the 3, 4, 5 triangle? I hope you do. Nice. Now, we're going to go ahead and obviously take the square root, but... A complex number, if you've seen the lecture videos or if you're already knowledgeable about complex numbers, if you haven't seen the, uh, or if you're new to complex numbers, by the way, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made about nine videos, I think, on basics of complex numbers. They're really basic, but it pretty much explains what uh, these things are. So a complex number has two square roots, okay? A real number has a single square root, which is the principal square root, which is defined as the positive or non-negative one, because zero also has a square root. Uh, but complex numbers has two square roots. But they're easy to find because if you find one of them, the other one is just going to be the opposite. Now think about it. In the complex world, 4 has two square roots, 2 and negative 2. That kind of makes sense, right? Because if you square each of these numbers, you get 4. So that's what it is. And the same thing works for any complex number. So how am I going to find the square root of negative 4? I mean, negative 3 plus 4, right? That's going to be the million dollar question, right? Okay, here's the question. And here's how we can do it. We can actually go ahead and write this in a different way. Like what? I can go ahead and write it as 1 plus 4i minus 4. And then the purpose behind that is to be able to write it as a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. So when I square root it, it's going to come out as a plus b. That's one of the solutions. The other one is minus a minus b, of course. But we're talking about one of the solutions first, okay? So, what does that mean? This just means that I could probably write this as maybe 1 squared, and then this will be 2i squared. Make sense? Great. And that's perfect because if, you, if your a is 1 and b is 2i, then 2ab is just going to be 4i, which is what you have. That's the goal. I mean, it's not always possible. It's not always straightforward. And there is a formula even for the square roots of complex numbers. I believe I shared it as a post. And I probably used it in one of the problems that we did a while ago anyways. But this is what it is. And now this can be written as the square root of 1 plus 2i squared. Right? 
ignore the arrow and if you if that bothers you we can just go ahead and get rid of that real quick here we go okay now this is going to come out as two different things and that's basically going to be the one plus two i is going to be one of them and that's what we're looking for and the other one is just going to be the opposite of this so we got it right so this number has two square roots one plus two i or negative one minus two i and we're going to use both of them but let's go back to our expression z equals one plus minus the square root of this expression now the plus minus is there for a reason it's just going to take care of both of these solutions makes sense because if you negate it you'll get the second one cool cool now let's go ahead and simplify this and now we're going to go back to one of the solutions and after that we still need to do the second method so stick around do not disappear okay all right now if i go with the plus sign one plus one plus two i over two that is going to be two plus two i which is one plus i you can call that z sub one if you want and z sub two is going to be one minus one minus two i divided by two ones get cancel out and we're going to end up with negative i beautiful so those are going to be the solutions of my equation right that was quadratic remember but what happened to the very first solution we found z equals zero hmm we gotta remember the original problem. Always refer to the original problem, especially if you have a radical equation, if you have a rational equation. Make sure you check your work. You know why? Because it may not work. Okay, you have to make sure it does work. So, let's put it to work. Now, notice that z equals zero is gonna turn this into zero over zero. Uh-oh, you don't want that. We're not taking limits here, come on. So z equals zero is rejected as a solution. Too bad, but well, we're gonna take the other ones. So this equation has two solutions, one plus i and negative i. Let's quickly look at the second method and then we'll hopefully finish up with that, okay? Real quick. Now, the second method is really nice because that's how the problem was designed actually, if you think about it very carefully. I can go ahead and factor out a z because it's a common factor and I didn't do it on purpose because uh, that wouldn't be the first method and then do the same thing here. Now suppose z does not equal zero and z can never be zero. You probably know that. Cancel it out. z does not equal zero. We know that. It's not going to come out at the end hopefully. Now this kind of looks like a quadratic right? But wait a minute. Hold on. This is the second one that needs to be really elegant and it is. We can factor some of two squares in the complex world. Remember that? A squared plus B squared is what? A plus B I, and that's the name of this channel, right? Times A minus B I. If you multiply two conjugates, you get the absolute value squared. Remember that? So this can be factored into Z plus I times Z minus I, how nice, divided by Z plus I, and then set equal to one. And now Z plus I should not be zero, right? Hmm, what happens if z plus i is equal to zero? That means z is going to be negative i. Is negative i a solution? Yes. How come? Maybe it's not a solution. We didn't check that. Uh-oh. Not too bad. But anyways, this second method uh, gave us a good thing. So now z plus i is going to cancel out. Of course, z cannot be negative i. No, Uh-oh. That's not going to happen. So z minus i needs to be 1, which means z equals 1 plus i. You know what that means? this is the only solution because if z is equal to negative i think about it now let's go back to the original back to basics if z is equal to negative i then plug it in and negative i cubed is negative i cubed which is i and then z is negative i this is going to be zero z squared z squared is going to be negative one z is going to be negative i it's going to be negative i squared which is positive one zero over zero uh oh we're not going to accept it so the only solution then is z equals 1 plus i the others are rejected and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye